December 7, 1941, a date that would forever change the course of history, a date etched in the annals of American history remembered for the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor, a day when the tranquility of a Sunday morning was shattered by the roar of Japanese aircraft descending upon the unsuspecting naval base. The attack on Pearl Harbor remains a pivotal moment, a stark reminder of the cost of unpreparedness and the devastating impact of war. But what if we told you that US naval intelligence had glimpses of the impending attack? What if the signs were there, but they were overlooked or misunderstood? What if crucial information, intelligence that could have changed the course of history, was available but left unheeded? The implications are staggering. The story of Pearl Harbor is not just about the attack itself. It's a complex narrative of missed opportunities and ignored warnings. It's about the missed signals, the warnings ignored, and the tragic consequences that followed. It's about the fog of war and the human cost of complacency. The lives lost, the families shattered, and the nation thrust into a global conflict. Join us as we delve into the shocking truth, the intelligence failures, and the events that led to that fateful day. Fasten your seatbelts, for this journey will uncover the hidden layers of history. This is a story you won't want to miss. A story of intrigue, of human error, and of the high stakes of wartime intelligence. The surprise attack on Pearl Harbor plunged the United States into the Second World War, altering the course of the conflict and the world forever. It was a devastating blow, but was it truly a surprise? Or were there signs that, if heeded, could have prevented the tragedy? Or were there whispers, hints, and outright warnings that were tragically ignored? The evidence suggests a complex web of missed opportunities. The answer, as we shall uncover, is a resounding yes. There were clear indicators that an attack was imminent, yet they were not acted upon. The road to Pearl Harbor is paved with missed opportunities and critical errors in judgment, each step, each decision leading inexorably to that fateful morning. By carefully examining the events leading up to the attack, we can begin to understand how such a catastrophic failure of intelligence could have occurred. We can learn from the past to prevent future tragedies. The 1930s were a time of global tension. Across the world, storm clouds gathered as aggressive powers like Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan flexed their military muscles. The Pacific, in particular, was a powder keg. Japan, with its expansionist ambitions, viewed the United States as a threat to its goals in Asia. American intelligence agencies weren't blind to the rising threat. They knew of Japan's military build-up and its aggressive posture. Intercepted communications, diplomatic cables, and even open source intelligence painted a picture of a nation preparing for war. The question wasn't if, but when and where Japan would strike. The whispers were there, faint at first, but growing louder with each passing month. Reports of increased Japanese naval activity, the sudden disappearance of Japanese diplomats from their posts, and a spike in coded messages all pointed towards an impending attack. But somewhere along the line, these whispers were lost in the wind. The intelligence community, bogged down by bureaucracy and perhaps a touch of wishful thinking, failed to connect the dots. The stage was set for disaster. The road to December 7th is littered with red flags, warnings that in retrospect seem glaringly obvious. These warnings were not just subtle hints, but glaring signals that something catastrophic was on the horizon. Yet they were ignored, dismissed, or simply lost in the bureaucratic shuffle. One such instance involved the Japanese consulate in Honolulu. The consulate was a hub of activity, a place where Japanese officials were constantly sending and receiving communications. Naval intelligence, through a program known as Operation K, had been monitoring the consulate's communications. This program was designed to intercept and analyze any potentially threatening messages. They noticed a peculiar request from Tokyo, a detailed report on the exact locations of US warships in Pearl Harbor. This was not a routine request. It was a clear indication that Japan was gathering intelligence for a specific purpose. This request, a blatant attempt to gather targeting information should have set alarm bells ringing. It was a red flag that should have prompted immediate action and heightened alertness. Yet it was dismissed as routine intelligence gathering. The officers in charge did not see it as a significant threat, perhaps due to a lack of imagination or an underestimation of Japanese capabilities. 
Another missed opportunity came in the form of intercepted diplomatic cables. These cables were rich with information, providing insights into Japanese plans and intentions. The Japanese, desperate to keep their plans secret, used a complex code known as purple for their most sensitive communications. This code was considered unbreakable by the Japanese, a testament to their confidence in its security. The Americans, however, had cracked the code. This was a monumental achievement, giving them access to high-level Japanese diplomatic traffic. They were privy to high-level Japanese diplomatic traffic, including messages that hinted at an attack on the US. These messages were not vague. They contained specific details that should have raised immediate concern. Again, these warnings were not given the weight they deserved. The intelligence community failed to connect the dots to see the bigger picture that was forming right in front of them. They were lost in the deluge of intelligence reports, their significance overlooked. The sheer volume of information coming in made it difficult to prioritize and act on the most critical pieces. The failure to act on these red flags points to a systemic problem within US intelligence. There was a lack of coordination, a failure to share information effectively, and a dangerous underestimation of Japan's capabilities and intentions. There was a lack of coordination, a failure to share information effectively, and a dangerous underestimation of Japan's capabilities and intentions. This systemic failure ultimately led to one of the most devastating attacks on American soil. An attack that could have been mitigated, if not entirely prevented, had the red flags been heeded. Section 4. The winds of war intercepted messages and decoded secrets. The United States Navy had a secret weapon in the lead up to Pearl Harbor, a team of brilliant code breakers. These individuals, working tirelessly in top secret facilities, were tasked with intercepting and deciphering Japanese communications. Their efforts, codenamed MAGIC, provided a window into the inner workings of the Japanese government and military. In the months and weeks leading up to December 7th, the MAGIC intercepts grew increasingly alarming. Messages spoke of a wind's execute order, a clear indication that Japan was preparing for war. Other intercepts mentioned a Japanese task force moving under strict radio silence, its destination unknown. The information gleaned from MAGIC was invaluable, but it was also fragmented and often cryptic. The code breakers provided the pieces of the puzzle, but it was up to intelligence analysts and decision makers to put them together. Sadly, this is where the system broke down. The decoded messages filled with ominous warnings were often delayed in reaching the right people. When they did arrive, they were often misinterpreted or simply ignored. The intelligence was there, but it was lost in the bureaucratic maze. The code breakers, often working around the clock, faced immense pressure. They knew the stakes were high and every piece of information could be crucial. Despite their best efforts, the fragmented nature of the intelligence meant that putting together a coherent picture was a monumental task. Communication channels were overloaded, and the sheer volume of intercepted messages made it difficult to prioritize the most critical information. Couriers and communication officers worked tirelessly to ensure that the decoded messages reached the right hands, but the system was far from perfect. The decision makers, often overwhelmed with the influx of information, struggled to separate the signal from the noise. As the Japanese fleet moved closer to its target, the urgency of the intercepted messages increased. Yet the warnings remained buried in the bureaucratic labyrinth. The tragic events of December 7, 1941, serve as a stark reminder of the consequences of miscommunication and missed opportunities. The codebreakers' efforts were not in vain, but their warnings came too late to prevent the attack. Their work, however, laid the foundation for future intelligence operations. The lessons learned from the magic intercepts have shaped modern intelligence practices, emphasizing the importance of timely and accurate communication. Today, we honor the code breakers who worked tirelessly behind the scenes. Their contributions are testament to the power of intelligence and the importance of vigilance. Section 5 the 11th hour, a warning unheeded. As dawn approached on December 7th, a final desperate warning reached American shores. A Japanese message intercepted and decoded by US intelligence 
explicitly mentioned an attack on Pearl Harbor. The message, known as the 14-part message, was intercepted just hours before the attack. It laid out, in no uncertain terms, Japan's intentions. It was the smoking gun, the irrefutable proof that an attack was imminent. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. The message, due to a series of bureaucratic delays and miscommunications, arrived at Pearl Harbor too late. By the time the warning reached the commanders on the ground, Japanese aircraft were already soaring over the Pacific, their bomb bays laden with explosives. The 14-part message serves as a chilling reminder of the importance of timely intelligence. It was a warning that could have saved countless lives, but it arrived at the 11th hour, lost in the chaos and confusion that characterized the final hours before the attack. 